So I was talking to one of my clients last night and she said, oh, I heard about your TED talk. I'm so excited for you. You're going to start with like a really cool story, right? And I said, uh, no, I'm going to start with my bio and some stats about the company. Ugh. And she said, no, you need to start with a story, something, you know, that'll make the, the people in the crowd, you know, empathetic towards you, tug at their heartstrings, um, say something interesting. And so I had to go, kind of go back to the drawing table. Um, the thing is, I wasn't sure if I should take her advice. Let me tell you a little bit something about her. She has 11 million subscribers on YouTube. She has unicorn hair. And um, I had to kind of figure that she knew better than me, so here goes. I was working at a movie studio about six or seven years ago, and I was doing everything I could to network and meet a lot of women in the space. And there was one particular woman, her name was Wendy, and I emailed her all the time. I, I wanted to get to know her. I actually had to limit my, my emails to once a month because I didn't want to be too crazy. I would try to go on the second floor and, and try to pass by her office and, and then kind of walk slower, you know, as I walk by her office. Hi, Wendy. I asked her to get lunch with me. I don't even know how many times. And every time she was always booked. Um, this, this kind of happened to me quite a few times along um, the course of my career. And I couldn't, I couldn't explain why. Um, for some reason, women just aren't that that interested in helping other women. So today I'm going to do something different. I'm actually going to turn the tables and try to help some women who might want to move forward. I'm here to try to give you five steps to help you move forward in your career and maybe even find the job of your dreams or create your own. My name is Ashley Villa and I own a talent management company. Um, we represent, you know, content creators, bloggers, um, women in fashion, beauty, lifestyle, um, YouTube stars. Does anyone here know what bloggers and content creators are? <laughs> um, does anyone know that these people actually have huge teams behind them? They actually have publicists, attorneys, um, agents, managers, um, videographers, editors. It's not a small team, it's actually a lot of people. Um, but what is a manager? When someone asks me what a manager is, I say, we can make your dreams come true. Um, what do you want to do? Do you want to star in a television show? Do you want to um, create your own unicorn um, shimmer body lotion with your name on it? Uh, do you want to be in a movie? We can help you do all that. Um, I mean, it's kind of a sales tactic, but I think it's true. I, be I believe in it. I think we really can do all of that. So I'm here to also talk to you about my um, transition from attorney to manager, which is what I do now. I actually started um, working in international film sales. That was my dream job. I worked at a movie studio. I was actually working for years to go to law school and eventually be able to go to you know, Cannes Film Festival and Toronto Film Festival. I was so excited to be able to be a part of that world. Um, except when I got there, for some reason, it wasn't actually where I wanted to be. For some reason, I, I really thought that I, I could do more. Um, and so I actually got a call, and I remember this day really clearly from my sister Stephanie, and she said, um, I have a really good friend. She um, is on YouTube. She's actually, you know, having... A, doing really well on YouTube and a lot of brands are starting to want to work with her. I need you to find her digital media attorney. Can you help her? And so I'm just like sitting in, in my office um, and I'm like, okay, I'll find one. But I looked around and there was no such thing as a digital media attorney, the, a YouTube attorney. I couldn't find one. So as a favor to my sister and her best friend, I actually started doing the deals myself for her. Um, but I was like, YouTube, I work in movies. I don't want to work in YouTube. What's YouTube? I don't want to do that. But as the deal started coming in, I started getting more excited. Um, a lot of the deals were fashion related or beauty related and she got to work with really cool brands and I started actually becoming really excited about her deals more than you know, the director deals and 
the TV development deals that I had actually thought were the types of deals that I wanted to work, work towards. Um, so it kind of was a natural progression and I actually started to um, get other YouTube clients because they couldn't find attorneys and they needed them too. And um, just because of the course of the business and the way that the deals were so um, intricate, you know, how many talking points is she going to mention in the YouTube video? The brand wants her to say certain things. How long is the YouTube video? How many Instagram posts does she need to have? What date is she going to post them? I actually started to naturally manage some of these clients. And for this particular girl um, who was growing very, very rapidly on YouTube in fashion, um, I actually became her manager quite quickly as a, as a kind of a side business um, on top of what I had already been doing. And now, four years later, I actually have my own management company. It's female-owned, female-run, and female-driven. And that means that everyone who works in my company is a female. All of our clients are a female. And you know, the industry, fashion and beauty, is female-oriented. We have an extremely global reach. I connect my clients to multimedia deals, brand collaborations. They work with some of the biggest brands in the industry from, um, say, Kim Kardashian or Netflix or maybe YSL Beauty, Fenty. Um, we work with pretty much all the biggest brands in the space. And I'm moving towards some of my clients have won, you know, top 10 Forbes beauty um, awards, uh, fashion awards. This year, one of my clients, um, she actually won the 2018 NAACP Influencer of the Year Award, which I think is a huge feat. Um, one of my clients has 11 million subscribers on YouTube. Um, she was the, for, the voice of the fourth Powerpuff Girl on Cartoon Network, the newest one, which I thought was really cool. Um, one has pretty much a sold out fashion line um, that drops every other month. And I'm really proud of one of my clients who actually partnered with Too Faced this year and expanded their foundation um, line by nine shades. And that's nine shades of foundation that women of color didn't have before to choose from. Okay, so enough about me. I uh, talked myself up quite a bit now. And we're going to move into career tips, how you can actually create the job of your dreams and um, be at the top of the ladder. OK, number one, you must put in the hard work to gain the experience. In my mind, hard work is the foundation to get to where you want to go. You need to gain experience, get the knowledge, and only then will you become an expert in that field. I'd have, I like to say something about hard work and being the smartest. You don't have to be the smartest to get to where you want to go. Um, I remember my college roommate, Renee, she had a photographic memory. Um, she could study for about an hour for a test, and I would study all weekend. And after we took the quiz or the test, she would get an A, and I would get an A. But I worked way harder than she did to get the A, but we still ended up at the same place. Um, hard work beats talent alone. You can't just have talent to get to where you want to go. You have to couple it with hard work. Um, don't compare your journey to someone else's. I think this is super important because with the rise of social media, we can see what um, you know, other people are doing all the time. Literally peep into their life on Instagram story at any time. And everyone's doing some cool stuff, you know? Um, does anyone here take photos for um, Instagram and, and put them on Instagram? OK, some people do. That's great. And um, does anyone here take photos of themselves in the library when they're studying and still post them on Instagram? Hair, bun mess. No one. Exactly. No one's posting, you know, photos of themselves when they're struggling. Everyone's posting photos of what they want everyone else to see. So don't let that, you know, judge, don't let that affect your image of yourself. Um, do it for yourself because no one else will. Um, if you can always ask for help, but at the end of the day, no one's going to do for you what you can only do for yourself. You have to get yourself there. No one else is going to do it for you. And it won't over happen overnight, so keep going. I, I looked to some of my clients for inspiration on this. One of my clients, she's been on YouTube for seven years, and she's posted at least one video a week on YouTube for seven years. She's missed two weeks. Only two, two weeks of videos in that entire time. Um, some of my other clients have been on YouTube for 
over 10 years. And you know, for the first nine years that they were doing YouTube, they're not getting press packages with all the coolest makeup or having fashion lines send them clothes to wear to fashion shows. That's just not happening. So you've got to keep going. You can't just start, start from the beginning and expect to see huge results. Create your reputation is number two. Nothing's more important than your rep reputation. Whatever you do, do it well. And how you do anything is how you do everything. Um, you know, no, there's a lot of times when I'm you know, reading contracts super late and I kind of want to glaze over things. You can't just glaze over things. Every single word that you're reading is important. Confidence in your knowledge and skills is the foundation to seize new opportunities. You need to actually take a look inside yourself and know that you not only need to be prepared for when something great is going to happen to you, but you need to actually put in the time. You can't actually get, gain confidence until you put in some time for things that you're, you're doing. It's kind of like what they say about when um, preparation and luck to get opportunity. Uh, preparation plus opportunity, preparation plus luck is opportunity? I can't remember now. Um, but you have to have all of those things at the same time to actually seize those opportunities when they come. Okay, start anywhere. A lot of people say, um, I don't know where to start, what do I do? Literally just, if you can't figure it out, zero in on something that you're interested in and just jump into that, that field. Get some knowledge. Like, doing something is better than doing nothing, guys. Go above and beyond. Like, if you're, if you're being an intern and you need to go get coffee, figure out what your boss's favorite coffee is. She loves her almond milk, ste she loves her almond milk to be steamed, and she loves Splenda. Well, make that coffee the best coffee she's ever had. She won't forget you. Um, if you're writing, making a Christmas card list, um, make sure that every single detail of that Christmas card is correct because you know, if one small number is off, then they won't get their card. And add real value. I think this is super important because you can't actually add real value until you get some skills. So just jump in and try to get those skills in any way that you can. Carve out a niche for yourself and become indispensable. Hone your unique package. So as I was sitting at my, my desk realizing that, you know, I didn't actually want to do film sales anymore. I didn't want to do movies. I actually wanted to work with YouTubers. I actually had to go back to the drawing table because I didn't have skills to represent those YouTubers. I mean, I, I could do contracts, but I needed to really get into digital media and learn the space. So I actually quit my job that I was doing, and I went to work at a startup digital media company so that I could actually jump into the space and learn about digital media. I kind of had to let my previous dream go and start, start a new one. I had to start from scratch. But that was okay because now, after I worked a year at that company, I was able to, to learn more about the space. And you know, some of the contracts we were drafting, none of them even existed. And I, I noticed that some of those contracts that I had drafted back in the early days of digital media and those, those types of YouTube deals are still kind of floating around. Okay. So this goes back to what I was saying before. You need to, you need to actually get some skills in your space before you can actually influence other people. Okay, and then now I'm gonna give a little talk about networking and how to do networking well. Because I actually think that networking, unfortunately, is something that's important that you have to do as you grow in your, um, in your career. Sometimes it's not something that you really wanna do and like you don't wanna have to go out and, and meet new people, but it's kind of important to actually hone those relationships. When I, whenever I had an internship, I would try to get lunch with one of the executives at least once a week. Just ask around, see so we'll talk to you, um, just go and get lunch. And then when you're actually in your job, don't just get lunch with your you know, fellow colleagues. When you're connected to someone over email, reach out after you, you, know, you send the email, and then you reach out again and you say, hey, by the way, I'd love to you know, get coffee with you. Um, you don't work in the same company as me, but I'd love to get to know you. Um, meet with people inside and outside of your, your company. And lastly, um, build for the future. So I was, my first job out of college, I was second assistant to a prolific music attorney. He was, he's a badass. He represents some of the biggest names in music. And I was his second assistant. That was 10 years ago. And now, one of my clients, she actually wants to become a singer. So who did I hire to represent her as an attorney? Well, my old boss. 
So it really can happen where, you know, you hone these relationships and eventually they'll lead to more in many other ways than you could have ever expected. So this is how you can do it. Build strong working relationships. Oh. Okay, and then the fifth step, as we move along and start learning more and more about, you know, your business and, and honing in those skills, it's at that point, once you've gained some knowledge, that we can actually start to make a change. I can look back and, and learn about how I can empower other women. How I did it. Well, I've hired only women in my company, but we have a company by women, for women, and with women. We actually work with women every single day, and all of our clients are, are, female, are females as well. So now that I've actually been able to hone some of my skills and move forward in my career, kind of in a way that I have wanted to shape it, um, we've actually been able to help women in other ways outside of just in the, work, in the workforce. When I was working at a, um, a movie studio, um, they would get lunch every single day, and by they, I mean the boys club. The boys club would get lunch every single day, and um, I wasn't allowed to go. And so after a while, in fact, I started to bring my own lunch um, because I wasn't allowed to be in the boys club. But now we're in a position where women can actually help each other. We can actually have our own club. And in fact, I would like to say that whatever your gender, your true pronoun or gender identity, you can actually sit, come sit with us. You can actually come to our club. It doesn't have to be a boys club. In fact, there might always be a boys club, but now we have our own club. And I don't, I don't have to go to your club anymore. Emily Weiss, the CEO of Glossier, said it really well. She said, I think reality television has made the fashion and beauty industry, any industry, seem much different than it really is. And there's a lot of misconception that fashion jobs are really glamorous. That leads to entitlement and a lot of unrealistic expectations about what an entry-level job is. I'd like to take, to take a moment to think about that. As you're, as you're going through your job, and you're not feeling like you're making a difference. I hear a lot of um, millennials say, you know, I'm really not interested in my job. I don't feel like I'm making a change in this world. That's okay. Why don't you hone your skills? And even if it's not exactly the job of your dreams, you're still gaining some, some relationships and you're still gaining some skills so that eventually you can get to where you want to go and you can shape um, the career of your dreams. You can climb to the top of the ladder just by gaining more knowledge and working hard. So I, I have um, a thought um, in my conclusion, and that's, you know, they say a lot of things about social media. Um, they say that it can be for positive or for the negative. But I really do believe that it's going to be doing more positive things than negative things. And I can take myself as an as example. I've been able to hone relationships through social media. I've been able to create opportunities for my clients through social media. I've been, built my entire business on social media. And it's actually fostered a community of women um, that I don't think could have connected in any other way. Um, we started a foundation based around the fact that females have a platform on social media and they can band together to help each other and connect each other. I've learned through the past couple years um, how amazing the entrepreneurial spirit um, can be once awakened. I've worked harder for myself than, than I would have for anyone else, that's for sure. And I really think that once women can come together, we can pay it forward and help each other. Thank you. <laughs>